Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, just going to throw this man here under the bus. I'm only here because he called me last week, if I can present. <laughs> um, he only told me last week to come um, to CrestCon and also come present. And I'm like, you do know my back background, right? I do security culture and awareness. This is like a super technical conference, but he said, just come and talk, even if you don't have slides. So I'm like, fine, I will come, but I will have slides. Um, so yes, my topic is don't just hack, communicate the findings, because I think it's really important. So just a little bit about me. If you don't know, I am Daisy. Um, I actually did a marketing degree, so I'm a marketing graduate. And as Lucas said, food influencer. If you want to look me up on Instagram, it's Daisy underscore never too sweet. Um, and I do go out a lot and share those things. Um, my first cybersecurity job was actually in a pen testing team. Now, if this works, yes, that's me. And these are the pen testers. Uh, you might recognize some of them. Austin Nodding. Do you re recognize anyone? They're in your team. You met them. <laughs> anyway, just proof. If you recognize them, I have proof. They are real pen testers and I worked with them. Um, anyway, so my first job was in um, the yeah, pen uh, penetration testing team. I am not technical before you ask, never want to be, um, but I was their uh, penetration test, what was that called? Uh, pen test scheduler. That was my, yeah, I don't know why they gave me that title, but anyway, I was scheduling what the pen testers did. So I only just realized when I joined the team, not all pen testers had the same skill. Try putting, I don't know, some guy only did iOS and the other dude only did Android. Try swapping them. They were very upset. So I did that for three and a half years. Uh, then I moved into state government. So um, I was at the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Uh, Dan Andrews just resigned. I worked under him, never met him, but I was there for three years. And now I'm at Flybys. My favorite question is, show of hands, who's a member? You have to be a member to be here. Otherwise, doors there, dismissed. Um, yes, and I've been there for about 16 months and I'm loving it. Um, and yeah, I'm just really passionate about helping people understand cybersecurity um, to protect themselves. And one way we can help them understand it is to communicate with them. So when you go traveling, you go to France, you don't speak French, people don't know what you want. It's not really their fault. You're not speaking their language. Same thing. Um, and just remember, you can't patch humans. Humans are unpredictable and you can't patch them. So you need to learn to communicate and educate. So this reached out to the team, the guys I showed you before, I reached out to them. I'm like, what was all that stuff you used to do when I was in the team? And they sent me all this, cross-site scripting, remote code execution, SQL injection. And I'm like, great. And they're like, do you remember the CVSS score? We always use that. Remember the higher the score, the, thing, the worst things were? I'm like, great. This is how I feel. And I lasted three years with them. And I'm like, what on earth are you doing? Um, I understand the benefits and the requirement of having pen tests, but I'm like, dude, you need to communicate. At least I need to understand, because if I don't understand the business, I understand why you're doing pen tests, what are these findings and what you can do about them? So human risk, just some stats, I think. Was it Nick who just presented about business email compromise? So this is from the Verizon data breach report. So um, they reported this, I think, a few months ago. 74% of all breaches involved a human element. So it's not because you need patch. It's not because technology isn't good enough. It's because of a human element. It's social engineering. It's error or misuse. And then 95% of all those breaches are, you know, financially motivated. We've all heard of ransomware. And then 50%, I think Nick spoke about it before as well, is bi uh, business email compromise. I know at Five Eyes we've received quite a few CEO imposter, um, sorry, yes, uh, uh, fraud attacks. We've also had a new CFO join and it, we've already got quite a few emails pretending to be him. Um, and uh, obviously 24% of all the breaches um, involve ransomware and, you know, encrypting the data and demanding a ransom. So these are just some stats. And I also called this man here last week when I didn't know what was going on at MGM, when I was asked to do something about it. And I'm like, what, what actually happened? And I learned that if I'm not wrong, this was um, a social engineering attack. Meaning it, again, people, process, technology, wasn't because technology failed them. It wasn't because process, it could be, but it was because of people. So, you know, my understanding and chat will jump in and tell me if I'm right or wrong. And that is um, the attackers found MGM's employees on LinkedIn, called the help desk and changed their password and uh, probably MFA. 
Now, I don't know all the details, but I like the hacker group, Scattered Spider. Yep, sounds cool. But um, just, yeah, the ransomware attack started with a single phone call. So again, it's really important we educate and communicate with our staff and also customers. So I'm here to help you. How can you do better? I'm going to give you four S's and I'm going to make it really simple because otherwise I would have failed to communicate with you. So the, <laughs> the four S's are, first one is shortness. The next one is simplicity. The third one is strength. And the fourth one is sincerity. So what do I mean by shortness? The shorter the message, the more effective it is. Now, does everyone, and am I showing my age? Does everyone know the acronym TLDR? Anyone know? Austin knows? Anyone else know? Okay, not, not bad. Nigel, you know? I'm surprised. Ugh, okay. <laughs> so for those who don't know, TLDR means too long, didn't read. Okay, so we often do that. Sometimes we're too passionate. Sometimes we don't know how to explain it short. So we just keep typing in paragraphs, okay? So we want to be short but sharp. So remember, the shorter the message, the more effective. Um, simplicity, okay? We want to use plain English. Remember all the first slide? Cross size, screw, SQL injection, CVSS score. Great. Can someone please, you know, translate that to normal plain English? Try not to use acronyms. Okay, and uh, try not to use too many technical terms. Um, and also, you know, be aware of your audience as well. So, you know, some, you know, the tech team that um, at Flybys, they're a little bit more, they know more terminologies. I do use the tech terms with them. But, you know, with other, like marketing team, I definitely don't. And I always try and use examples and analogies. Now, strength. We want to have a credible source. Use data and statistics. Now, I don't believe in fear, like fear mongering, but having a few stats up your sleeve is always good. And, you know, I always say top down, bottom up approach and squash everyone in between. So get someone high above, like your CTO, CEO to support you um, and champion for you. And then bottom up approaches like, you know, your, your junior staff to also support and everyone else in between should follow. Last but not least of the four S's is to be sincere, kind and empathetic. Now, why I say that it is because when I was in the pen testing team, everyone used to say, I'm so sorry, Daisy, must be so hard. You're hurting cats. I'm like, tell me about it. They don't really have a very good reputation. Okay, um, and that's not just for the guys who are now working with us, Austin. It's even my own um, tech team or security team at Firebase. Generally speaking, tech people don't have a very good reputation. Not everyone. There are nice humans, but um, sometimes I think we, um, the security team, the tech people, can appear a little bit arrogant, and they just think, "But what don't you? Why don't you understand? It's so easy." I did a pen test. I broke into your systems. You're a bad developer. Go fix it. Goodbye. And it's like, well, no, that just pisses people off. You don't communicate like that. Um, so I think it's really important to be sincere and to be empathetic and understand the other person's point of view as well. Um, and yeah, to be kind. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, when I worked at the bank, I remember um, the Apple Watch first came out. I don't remember which series. It might have been series one. Um, and all the banks all compete with each other, okay? They all want more customers. They all compete with each other. And they were competing to be the first one to have the Apple Watch app be released. The bank I was working at, NAB was not the first, but they didn't want to be the last. So they were really trying to, you know, get the developers to push it out. We did a pen test on them and it, the report was bad. Lots of findings. CVSS scores were all red. And I'm like, can you throw in a green? And my team laughs at no days. It's really bad. We're not going to sign off. Um, and they literally just said that. Just tell them we're not going to sign off. It's dangerous. It's lots of vulnerabilities. They're not going to want to deal with um, the ramifications. That's it. And I'm like, how do you, so they sent the report as is without any communication to the business owners, asset owners. And they're like, we don't get it. How bad is it? No one could explain. So then I had to come and translate. I said, if you allow this app to go out, this is what the brand reputation could be if we got hacked. And they were like, oh, because they were like, we don't care days. We need to, because, and I understand their KPI is not to fix vulnerabilities. Okay, their KPI is to get people to download the app, use the app and, the, you know, and generate revenue that way. 
Um, so they didn't understand the vulnerabilities. So that's why I had to explain it to them. And when I did and I used the four S's, they understood. And um, I think it was pushed out by a few weeks. And we fixed the vulnerabilities before it was um, pushed out. So, yeah. And they understood. And, like, you know, um, it, it also helps if you have better communication to build those relationships um, with the other teams. Why is this not moving? Lucas. Okay, it worked. Great. Okay. If I need anything, I'll just blame you. Um, so I found this quote, which I kind of liked. Um, it's by Tony Robbins. I'm hoping everyone knows him. Never met him. Tall guy. Famous coach and speaker. I liked his quote though. So to effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. So very similar to what I said, think of their point of view. Okay, so, you know, as the security team, pen testing team, you're here to find vulnerabilities, you're here to protect the, the business, but the core business is to probably sell a service, sell a product to make money. Without that, security also doesn't have funding. So you just need to think of the whole business holistically. Um, and again, communicate. Um, you can never over communicate. Uh, and just t some takeaways. How much time did you give me, chat? I think I flew through this. But anyway, I can do some Q and A's. Um, some takeaways. I think I mentioned it before. Know your audience. So go speak to them, listen to them, understand your audience. It's offensive if you go to a security team and try, you know, dumbing things down. I think that's a bit offensive, right? So know your audience. Um, so when I'm talking to the tech teams, I often bring a technical person with me so they can talk tech because I'm not, I don't have that um, knowledge. When I'm talking to, like I said, marketing, I'll use more marketing um, analogies and stories and things like that. So then also knowing your audience then impacts um, your the language that you use. So speak their language, use their terms. Um, not everyone, you know, I think I used patch in some comms the other day and internal comms was like, days, patch what? Don't get it. Just use the word fix. I'm like, okay. And, if, you know, eight years into this into this career, I still, I, I sometimes fall into that trap because I'm just like, everyone knows what patching means, right? She's like, nope, can we just use the word fix? I'm like, okay, fine. So, yeah, just know your audience, speak their language, um, last but not least, like I said, use lots and lots of analogies and stories if you can, because people won't remember the CVSS score. People remember stories and analogies. Um, and that's why, you know, it's usually more effective. And Q&A time. We do have plenty of time for some questions as well. So thank you, Daisy. Can we have, but first, can we have a warm round of applause for Daisy Wong? And on the documentation side of things, I remember, and some of you are in this room, I was a bit of a stickler when we were working together for documentation. Uh, and I used to kind of say to the teams, like, you know, you could spend the entire night, the entire weekend developing the best exploit code, you've, you know, the world has ever seen. Yeah. But if you can't effectively communicate that to a client, then no one sees it, no one cares. They just, you know, flip it through to the bin. And I think that's quite uh, incredibly important. Uh, now on the receiving side of a lot of these pen test reports <laughs> from you know, reviewing third, our third party vendors and whatnot. I see some really good ones. Um, yeah, some really good ones. And I see some really poor ones. And that mm. reflects from my side of things as a purchaser of software, yep. uh, the potential issues with that vendor. So we choose to partner or not with that third party as a result. So it's incredibly important to kind of communicate effectively. Uh, with that rant, I'll throw it out to the <laughs> to the floor. Uh, are there any questions for, for Daisy from anyone in here? Yep, Josh. Uh, in, in a situation, firstly, great talk, thank you. Um, in the situation where maybe you are communicating um, to an audience where you don't necessarily know the, I guess, the technical level of mm -hmm. the consumers, it might be going to executives or it might be going to a technical team. Do you have any sort of strategies of how to tailor something so it will be a good fit sort of when you don't have the insight of who you're talking to? Yeah, 100%. I think that's a really good question. I think it's always good to ask, but obviously there are times you can't. I think having a really good executive summary and dot points. 
that is a really good way to cover yourself. So always have the detailed report and put as much information as you want. But again, try and tailor it as much as you can. But I always try to have a really good um, executive summary and just dot points. Um, and I forgot about to mention it before, but when I said about language and understanding your audience, business risks. Everyone knows risks. Talk, speak to them in their language. So is this a risk? Is this going to, you know, what is the level of this risk? Um, how can you mitigate it? Things like that. So, yeah, and, um, and if it's like CFO, talk about the risks when, in dollar figures. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. One more here. Thanks, Daisy. Found that really interesting. Um, to what degree uh, do you think that neurodiversity might be a factor in some of the communication challenges? Sort of understanding in, in, in both directions, I guess. Yeah, 100%. Um, I would say if you have the budget and resource, hire yourself a Daisy, but not everyone can. Um, uh, no joke, I was, my role was eventually made redundant at the bank and when I left they said you're a nice to have Daisy we can't afford you I'm like great so if you can afford a Daisy get yourself a Daisy to help you translate but if not I think it's like any other skill I think you know you should um educate and upskill your your technical staff yeah and it will be more challenging if there are neurodiverse but I think you know like anything you can practice and learn I think that's a quote of the conference get yourself a Daisy <laughs> you're just jealous <laughs> All right. So, you know, when you're working with pen testers, right? So <laughs> I am one and, um, you know, we, we talk in a different language, right? Mm. And then <coughs> we kind of bias with our own way of life. Yeah. So this SQL injection, we use that, go DA, blah, blah, blah. Right. right. So how do you convince those technical people to understand and appreciate the business and, you know, kind of, not necessarily dumb down, but then, you know, tailor it to the audience. What what are the tricks apart from that? Like, you know, how do you start that conversation as a first timer in the organization, yeah. right? So not a lot of us here <coughs> are like technical, right? Mm. Or non-technical, I don't know, right? So non-technical people go to their business tomorrow, maybe not tomorrow, maybe on Monday, right? And then how do you start? What is the takeaway from that? Like, how do they start that conversation with a technical team on change in that language? Well, I think communication goes both ways. So if we need to c convert technical language and concepts and things for the non-techs, I think we need to do the same, like you said, chat with the um, technical stuff. I think it's really helping them understand why the business is important and what is the core business, what is the core purpose of your business? I'm sorry, most of them, like I never worked in a purely security company. So flybys, we are a loyalty program. So our sole purpose is to help our members collect points, redeem points, and that needs to be your first uh, priority. And it's not saying security is not important. We have like 9.5 million members data, so it's very important. I work in that team, there's 25 of us, it's a pretty big team. But I think it's really important that technical staff understand what the purpose of your business is. And I'm sorry, have, a, have some humble pie. Security is important, but it's not the most important. Um, you know, security's KPI, like I said, is to protect the business. Marketing's role is to help sell a product. You know, um, customer service is to answer the members' um, inquiries. They all have different priorities and you need to respect them. Why is, uh, and this is where sometimes I find, not all again, some technical and some security teams just find themselves like they're really um, important, like self-important. I think they need a bit of self-awareness that there's more to a business than just security. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. That's great. Uh, I've got one more question over here. Not you. Yes, me. <laughs> um, Days, there's been a lot of stuff with AI being used externally mm. to come into businesses. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and, and if you've tried it at Flybys or anywhere else. AI on the other side to train staff maybe to pick up nuance or differences with staff to tailor the training more from an AI model yep. to see if we can get people up to speed. Because, you know, some people, yeah, I'm good at fishing, but maybe not so much on physical security or shoulder surfing or something else. Have you looked at that as a possibility of using AI or generative AI as a way of training staff better uh, from your side? Yeah, hundred percent. We've um, well, first of all, AI has kind of sent the security awareness industry in a bit of a frenzy, just because now within seconds 
ChatGPT can write you a very eloquent email. I'm starting to pick them though. They still always use the same words and they always add a lot of words in. Um, but yes, uh, we have been talking about how we can use AI into training staff. Um, I think Microsoft has something called Copilot we were looking at. So I think that will actually like, you know, look at your emails when you receive them, have pop-ups and things like that. Um, but I think, Jason, when you were saying shoulder surfing, I think we saw on LinkedIn our friend Tony posted. Yeah, I think I think there's other – like, so we focus a lot on phishing and business email compromise because we're all using emails and things like that. But I think there are other threats that I think we also need to focus and as simple as shoulder surfing. So – I do this a lot. I don't think it's right, but I love going to the airport and taking photos of people working near me and sending them to the team. I'm like, this person is working at this company doing this. And they're like, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I think there's just other, yeah, other areas we need to focus on, especially now with AI. Thank you. Uh, any other questions in the room? Any, any others at all? Uh, over here. He, he's very animated. What do you want? <laughs> All right. So this is this is a sort of a personal question as well, right? Ah. So you know, you you get technical people, and uh, majority of them are, you know, not necessarily coming from a background like me. They are not native English speakers, yeah. right? So when we communicate our findings, yeah. you know, we we have that language problem. I actually had a long chat with Nick around this, right? So yeah. how do you, as a crest global organization, coming from the UK, how do you actually push this into 26 countries? And how do you serve that members, right? Because, you know, your receiver might be a CEO, yep. native English speaker, right? And yep. then report is written by someone like myself who figure out English and yep. train English and not that great in English. Yeah. How do you have that conversation with those pen testers to if, uh, to have effective communications? So I think uh, ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, no, and it goes back to what Jason said. Uh, is there a chance? I don't know. I'm not an AI specialist, but is there a chance a generative AI could help with that to help you know finesse those documents so then it does you know sound more like a native? So ChatGPT. It's, it's, it's fine, but as a person, what is your suggestions to develop as a technical person from a diverse background? Oh, how to improve to those address skills? that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so a girlfriend of mine, she's Chilean, and I didn't know this because I don't speak Spanish, but the Spanish language is very harsh. So she's very direct, So because she thinks in Spanish, so when she writes English, it's still like it's in Spanish, and it comes off really harsh. So it's just, hi, chat, do this now, thanks and it comes off really harsh. She eventually had a manager sit her down and said, hey, um, this is just more a cultural thing, communication style thing. In Australia, there's a, we like a little bit more fluff. Hey, hope this finds you well. Hope you're doing well. Happy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thank God it's the weekend. Like, and you know, her manager's just said, this is our culture, the way we communicate. And if you want to not offend people, you might want to adopt it. So, um, we're actually doing this at Flybys. Um, I've suggested doing some role playing because we've had some of our staff just be quite blunt and not collaborating as well as we would like them to. Um, and, uh, and we're going to be role playing with them. And they didn't realize until we had role plays that they were th that it came across blunt. And then it goes into more culture as well. So it's not just communication, right? Because culturally, um, like I said, the Spanish or even Chinese were quite blunt, but English culture is a little bit different. Cool. Good question. Thank you. Uh, this, these are my contact details. If you want to scan that, I promise that's legit. At least all my other friends who scanned it have not had any issues. Otherwise, there is my LinkedIn if you want to contact or stay in touch or have any questions. Oh, I told everyone my Instagram is daisy <laughs> underscore never too sweet. Didn't realize I had to promote that as well. Wasn't even supposed to be here. Nigel owes me dinner. <laughs> With that, can we have a warm round of applause for Daisy? <laughs> Thanks, everyone.